What's up, people? In this episode, I was able to do something that was very special to me. I was able to participate in the first annual boat ramp cleanup for not only the South Holston River, but also the Watauga River. Guys, the whole purpose of the event was simply to pick up trash on the Watauga River as well as the South Holston River for an entire half day, um, where basically people were dedicated and supplied with the tools that were needed to go out, clean up trash, and then properly put it away. Um, there were dumpsters provided for us, gloves were provided for us, um, trash bags were provided for us, and it was just an incredible event. It was a well-run event. It was an inspiring event. If you guys know me, you know that I really appreciated the fact that there were a ton of people out there dedicating their time to making sure that the place was nicer than we found it. Um, and I was just super excited and encouraged and obviously wanted to be a part of the event. So I was able to talk to both of the guys that were able to put together this event. Their names are Jason McReynolds as well as Todd Boyer. Um, and they took some time out of their busy schedule to actually meet with me and discuss why they put this event together and also why there is so much trash here in Appalachia. So um, I hope you guys really enjoy this episode. After I interview them, I go right into um, some GoPro action of me actually picking up trash, saying some goofy things. I hope you guys will stay around to the end. I hope you feel inspired to go out there and hopefully clean up and make the area a little bit nicer than you found it. What caused you guys to have to put this event on? You saw, obviously saw there's a need, so what, what spurred that? South Holston River Lodge does an annual cleanup called the Tailwater Roundup. Tailwater it's roundup. usually in March. I had to push it back to August. It is gonna happen, but it's just in August. So okay. we thought, well, we needed to get one done in the, in the spring. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's the, the main reason behind it. Okay, Yeah. Mm -hmm. awesome. So. Okay, so would you say there is a trash problem in this area? <laughs> yes. They're laughing. Yeah, <laughs> and it's sad, yeah. you know, um, that uh, I wish we didn't have to have a river cleanup. No. You know what I mean? So, but that we have awesome. to. Oh we have to. Yeah. Several reasons for it. It's not good for the environment. It's right. not good for us. And our biggest thing for as, as guides, it's embarrassing. Yeah. You know, and, and so it's eye pollution, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but it also, it's not good, you know. Yeah. So, but the you're going to... Trout are more fragile. Yeah. And they Absolutely. get caught up. Yeah. They get caught up in stuff, you know. So that plastic bags break down. Yeah. Uh, plastic cups break down. Yeah. I actually... It's happened once, but I had a trout caught in a six pack, like the no rings, way. plastic rings, yeah. No and way. it, yeah, I caught him and he had it around him, not kidding, it grew into him. Oh, you know, so, uh, yeah. You so, had it, an opportunity it, to save a trout there at least. Well, it, it was, it was too, you late. know, bad, in bad shape. So, okay. anyway, okay. but it, uh, yeah, so, but that's a, the biggest thing for guides. It's just, uh, it's not good. Yeah. you know for the environment not good for our rivers and it's also just embarrassing yeah. you know have clients yeah. floating down the river and they just see it you know so no, i agree i yeah. agree i mean that's one of the things i talk about when i go fishing and i mostly will clean up near um wilbur dam mm -hmm. um and i've literally been working on it for eight months okay? yeah yeah so i know it's a bad problem i also know that people come here as a destination just to fish yeah right mm -hmm. so it's almost like as someone who lives here i want to make sure it's good right? yeah for mm -hmm. everyone to enjoy yeah right definitely people yeah. pay a lot of money and this is a fly fishing destination okay. and yes the riverbanks need to be free of the trash because it is embarrassing let's talk mm -hmm. about that for a second so mm -hmm. you said that this is um, a destination so mm -hmm. when we're looking at like what I would consider the southeastern corridor for fishing what is, makes South Holston and Watauga River so special especially for trout obviously well, the biggest thing is they're, they're tailwater. So tailwater races are probably across the country the healthiest and and best rivers to fish, you know. Okay. They produce, you know, really healthy bug bug life. So, okay. um, but then, of course, it's, you know, it's publicized. You know, as South Holston, as, as like a top back in the day, it was in the top, 10 top five best best trout streams in the country yeah you yeah. know so that gets publicized and so it's um so it, and it's a destination so basically we're like the montana of the east okay you know okay. so yeah. that's basically what it is yeah okay. so. south holston was like five and this was what six yeah something like that five and six yeah that's so really good. Good. yeah in yeah. the country yeah. you know so uh it's tailwater you know, so it's got healthy bug populations, healthy trout, so. 
good hatches. Good hatches, so. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. What are some interesting items that were found? Is there any stories about anything that kind of was weird? I personally found a part of a truck. Well, uh, yeah. Bumpers. <laughs> you find all kinds of weird stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, hobby horse. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a little, little bouncy hobby horse, I think Patrick found. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, you find stuff that you d wish you didn't find, you know what I mean? But the, the biggest thing, mostly what you find is just a lot of plastic bags. They get shredded. That's oh, the yeah. problem. Uh, plastic bottles, uh, styrofoam. Those, big, those things yeah. just get busted and are everywhere. So yeah. that's the biggest thing. You're, you're, you're finding stuff that you're, you're just not going to get all of it picked up, you yeah. know? So yeah. that, that's the, the biggest thing. But yeah, you find some interesting things. So how but long yeah. have you guys been in the game? So let's let's get to that real quick because I'm kind of curious. I obviously I just told you I've been here for about as a resident of Tennessee for mm. 10 years. I love to fish here. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your guys' story real quick. Obviously you guys are guides. Okay. Mm. okay. Tell everybody how long have you been guiding? Mm. Um, and yeah, just kind of give us a little bit of your experience. Well, <clears throat> I've been in the industry I think since '95. 95. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'm from Pennsylvania originally. Okay. Came down. Yeah. My first uh, my first job in the industry was with um, the whole Snangler. It was uh, ran by Tim Landers. It was an Orvis shop. So okay. Got long in there time. part time. A long okay. time. Long time ago. So I've been in the industry since then. On Man. pretty much on all forms of it. Okay. <laughs> Across okay. the board. Yeah. I've ran shops. Okay. You know, I managed the Mahoney's Fly Shop for eight okay. years. I'm not there anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guided, you know, off and on all, you know, for that stint. Sure. You know, okay. yeah. um, I designed for Umpqua, Umpqua Feather Merchants. Oh. Uh, so, yeah. So Incredible. across the board, I've taught, I've taught fly tying. I've taught fly casting. I taught ET, at ETSU. Yeah. Fly casting. The class is there. Um, so across the board, I pretty much have done it all, you know. And then if you want to be in it in this industry, you, you, like as far as making it, you almost have to. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and it's actually nice to be across the board, like knowing pretty much the ins and outs of the whole industry. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's so, very interesting. So you've been yeah. around for a long time. Long time. You've seen yeah. the river for a long time. A long time. So you know there's been an issue all along. Yeah. You know. um, some have, have you noticed real quick starting mm, to cut you off yeah. have you noticed like an increase at all or has it just always been here um i think it's always been here okay um okay. there's what what's weird about it is some years are worse than others uh okay. <laughs> That's weird. this was what causes the bad years yeah yeah so and what happens is we got feeder streams that run out of the mountains yeah. so people throw stuff in the in the in the creeks that yeah. actually everything gets washed into the tailwaters oh, so then yeah, so when you get these high water levels uh, and you get bank stuff and it picks it up and it just takes it down. Yeah. Um, so it's always been here, like I said, but some years are worse than others. Okay. Um, right. So, um, yeah, and always the bottom ends, like the trophy section gets hit hard with the yeah. with trash always the lower parts of the uh, river see i can speak to that yeah. because there's yeah. a guy that also chases striper in spring yeah i'm hitting some of those lower ends where yeah. the dog will merge yeah and man the tires yeah and the amount of trash is insane yeah yeah and there's parts like where um that's like close to the roads that get road trash yeah. coming out of people's yeah. cars so uh there's one spot on Watauga behind the like the Elizabethan airport there where it comes oh, back. Gosh. It's horrible. Really? Horrible. Yeah. It's just right next to the highway there for it like is. a half mile, right? Yeah, and if you go road. back yeah. there behind that one road you look down, it it would it would take it would take months and months and months to clean all that up. You Speaking know, so, because I'm that guy. So, yeah. <laughs> I'll be working on yeah, it. Yeah, so be careful getting on that though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially from your kayak. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's another thing, too, is, um, yeah, you get road trash, people throwing stuff out. Yeah. It's just, the, the, what bothers me the most about it is just the disrespect that the, the, and then that our outdoors still still get, yeah. you know. So, yeah. um, and it's, what really bothers me is the disrespect that the people that use it still continue to do it. See, that's the thing that's to do it. for me, right? Because, like, as yeah. an outsider... Like, I, mm -hmm. it gives me, like, fresh perspective on how special this is. Mm -hmm. like, special place, right? Yeah. yeah. So to see this kind of stuff, looking at that trout just jumped. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a fantastic place, right? And it's yeah. sad to see that people are like not seeing that, right? And maybe it's because they've grown up here and they're just used to it. Yeah. And, uh, or whatever, right? Yeah, I grew yeah. up here. So. Yeah. Okay, so you see it, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things I try not to do is ever hate on somebody for yeah. putting trash out because I would say 90% mm -hmm. of what I find is typically you know, alcohol related. Mm -hmm. I found a lot of needles, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm working this river. Correct. And I mean, I, I can probably guess that most people are in such a low place that the last thing they really care about is throwing it out. But there still needs yeah. to be awareness about it because there needs to be a cultural shift. In yeah. my opinion, right? Yeah, you're right. So yeah. I'm, so I'm not necessarily trying to hate on people. But no. You need to know that it's there and, and try to push people in the right direction. Yeah. So that's what I've been trying to do for the last like six months. Yeah. And yeah. I'm starting to notice a little bit of a change on the upper end, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. I run into multiple people now, and they're literally picking up trash. And like, dude, we're right. picking up trash. We're putting our net, too. And I'm like. Well, you know, and then, and a lot of things, too, um, uh, you know, I don't blame people for it. Sure. You know. Yeah. Um, but the big, like, especially the people, like, that don't have anywhere else to throw yeah. this stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, like some of the, like up up in the mountains and stuff they don't have any they don't have it yeah you know place to put it you know it's yeah. like we had um for for an example we had our bin like one of our like down here okay um and Before. it was already three quarters full <laughs> you know from trash. from locals coming and putting their stuff in it you know so on both uh, on the yeah. one at the south holston too yeah. so i know that's true because when yeah. i go to put trash in the the, the, the dumpsters down at the dam mm -hmm. there's always residential stuff in it yeah every time, every yeah. Time. yeah yeah so, so and that's they're like hey we can get rid of stuff yeah so yeah. And honestly, I wish the counties and stuff would have them out all the time because yeah. I think we'd have less of a of an issue if they did. There's a um, need. Yeah. 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 So, okay. um, I think if people actually had a place to put it, it wouldn't end up in our river. I was born in Bristol and raised in Piney Flats and just like Todd, I mean, I fished this my whole life. Yeah. Started fly fishing. 98, 99, and okay. just, yeah. I went to God school in 2016, 2017. Okay, so I didn't even know that was a thing. That's awesome. Um, I was a contractor for FedEx Ground. Okay. Um, and me and my wife just chose to sell our FedEx business oh, and man. just literally i got for a living that's all i do so you went all in yes sir <laughs> how long ago did that happen um i've been guiding since 2016. okay I mean, i've heard a guy say that like fishermen are kind of the guardians well they we have to well we have to be right nobody else is going to do it no you know so and we make money off of this sure. yes you know so yeah. um this is our livelihood we got to take care of it, you know? Absolutely. So once yeah. it's gone, if it's gone because of that, and if you don't get return business because of that eye pollution of it, yeah. it hurts us, you know, and it yeah. hurts the river. So hurts the fish. It just hurts the whole, you know, the whole dynamic yeah. of fly fishing, you know, in I general. It's just a shame, right? Yeah. It is. It's, it's, a, it's, it's just bad. I, I remember one of my trips where, where I had some guys were just like, man you guys have a glittering problem here yeah. and i was like yeah we do you know and i'm like we we have river cleanups every year you know right you I know so taking out of that ramp right there yeah. and my clients were like there's something on the back of your trailer and i'm like it's just bark and everything because the water was yeah. up yeah. and i actually looked down before i stepped on it to secure my anchor and and there was three needles there yeah and i was yeah, like yeah because yeah. i came across some mm -hmm. a month ago i picked up i found a little black purse you know and i was mm -hmm. picking up a bunch of trash i said guys i just hit the jackpot <laughs> joking you know yeah opened it and was like ah oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know this is why you wear gloves yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's um oh, yeah Man. so that area that you know it just goes into the whole thing like it, it's, yeah. it seems like those two parts of like an area like poverty drugs littering just like it just blends all into one yeah. you know okay so let's talk about for a second when you guys went ahead and made the announcement that we're gonna do the cleanup we're gonna do this roundup 
Who are some people that stepped up to the plate that said, hey, we want to be involved, we want to help? The very first person that stepped up to the plate was the South Austin River Company. Okay. Um, then my Sims rep, our Sims rep stepped up to the plate. Okay. South Holston River Lodge stepped up to the plate. Okay. Um, Mahoney's okay. stepped yes. up. Yep. Um, Mountain Sports stepped up to the plate. A hundred percent first and foremost, AFCO. They they went uh, above. above and beyond, you know. So they yeah. they did donated a lot. And the biggest thing out yeah. is is uh. What, who we want to thank the most are just our local fishermen and just the local anglers that that yeah. that came out just to clean up their their rivers you know I, so yeah i do want to throw a couple names out okay go ahead brandon chambers okay um he's just a fly fisherman okay he got hundreds of tires and personally took them to the dump in really? his own yeah. vehicle. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Um, okay, that's, yeah, that's cool. So yeah. yes, Brandon, if you're watching this, message me. <laughs> I'm going to take care of you. Um, <laughs> Logan awesome. Shell and Amanda Shell, okay. they, she's Shell Fire Pottery. Okay. She's oh, yeah. the one that made yeah. this yeah, awesome. Got, yeah. Yeah. I mean, amazing. they yeah. make no money. They profit nothing yeah. from these rivers. It's, okay. There was more people like that at the event yeah. Then got yeah so now that's cool yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so we want to thank them okay. you know so for coming out i would like to thank um yaya's river shuttle mm -hmm. yeah. that was the property yeah she stepped up yeah that was great hamilton meats donated the food yeah <laughs> okay. hardy's mm -hmm. donated breakfast yeah So guys, if you're interested in going down the river with Jason or Todd, then I would highly recommend you go to their website above. Um, go ahead and reach out to them, contact them, and see if you can book a half day or full day trip. I think you guys will really enjoy that. They have a ton of experience. Combined experience is insane. Um, a lot of talent, and obviously if you're into fly fishing, this is, this is for you. Even if you're not, even if you're more like me where you use more of your spinner baits and spinner rods, they're still happy to accommodate you and take you down the river and show you exactly where to go. So I highly recommend you reach out to them, check out their website, and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can have a really full, a fun full day or half day floating down the Watauga River or the South Holston catching tons of trout. So you guys, we've got a big old group of fishermen from all over this area picking up trash today. And I'm with my buddy, Charlie Parker, who's currently over there doing some work. Super talented guide, and we're just getting out here and seeing what we can find today. So, hope you guys enjoy. What in the world is that? Be a road reflector? Huh, here we go. What do we got here? A little Mountain Dew. Oh, Diet Mountain Dew, health conscious. Little White Claw. Plastic bag, never good the top of a can here cut up mountain dew interesting uh can't, i can't even tell something light someone else health conscious here's a miller light another miller light coca-cola let's see here we've got a chill coors light gatorade monster dr pepper diet a lot of health conscious people today okay they're worried about their figure diet mountain dew or they all have diabetes i'm not i'm not sure what the heck is that guys is this a sole to a shoe? It is. What do we, oh no, a sandal. Oh no, someone doesn't have a sandal. Natty Light. Ooh, what do we got over here? Sonics, okay. Styrofoam, that'll never break down. Doctor Enough, get it out of here. More styrofoam. What in the world is that? Is that a sock? It's a sock, people. We've got two socks. Okay, that's random. Two socks. Hey, I've got a sandal. We got a pair now. <laughs> and I found a sole to a shoe. So, big old Gatorade bottle. Oh yeah. Here we go. Fresh chicken liver. Do people fish chicken liver for trout? Is that a thing? Huh. I find them all over the place, so I guess it has to work. They're leaving evidence. Here's something. Oh, here's a classic. Gotta get that doctor enough bottle. Rusty can, there you go. Man, yoo-hoo. That's a classic. Ooh, paper towel bag, okay. Man, look at all this stuff all the way across. This is a kills rats, mice, and meadow voles. Like rat killer poison stuff. 
Boom. Oh, barbecue. Keeping it grill. Okay. <laughs> Bat squatch. All right. <laughs> Man, we're finding all, oh, this one's got stuff in it. Oh, wow. Someone was very nice and put all their trash in a bag before they threw it on the ground. If you're not from this area, you don't understand, but here we've got some pals, okay? No hostess, okay? Ooh, Chick-fil-A, classy. Colt 45, here's the big boy right here. Guys, this bag is getting very heavy. Okay, Bahama Mama, let's go. Okay, styrofoam. Ooh, what is this? Okay, generic, giant 32 ouncer. Styrofoam, nonetheless. More styrofoam, a little bush light. Ooh, live bait night crawlers, two dozen. What do we have here? A little Red Bull, ow. Okay, with the thorns. Red Bull, water, can of corn, a little power bait. There we go. Look at all these smokes, people. Oh. Oh, more, what is that? Oh no, here we go. These uh, Trojan Ultra Thin, I'm glad they went thin. So guys, trout trestle spot, fishing line. Good thing I was wearing a glove, just stopped the hook from going in my hand. <laughs> Ever got another shoe sold to the shoe? We need more bags. This <laughs> is not gonna be enough. Oh no, here's, a, here's some liquor for you. Some people believe that you have to stay hydrated like a fish, you know, it's very important. had a really fun time hanging out with Charlie over the about a two or two and a half hour period as we picked up a lot of trash. He's another really talented guy in this area so if you're really interested in more of a spinner setup okay then he's your guy. I want you to check him out. Here's his link above. Um, he is a great guy. He's very talented and he will put you on a ton of fish. Believe me I've actually fished with this guy. I promise you you're gonna catch a lot of fish. Check him out um, and yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video. Till next time tight line.